Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, you are with me here, your host, Fikelepi Jackson. Oh my, my, yet another great day right here on the Against All Odds show. Listen, listen, I don't know what you've been up to. I don't know what you're doing right now. Uh, I don't know where you are tuned in from. Are you driving? If you are driving, please drive safely. Um, but if you are just relaxing, chilling, in your household I don't know where you are but wherever you are you know what I always say good news is worth sharing today is a very very uh, special day you know what I say you need to invite your loved ones to tune in I'm very very serious on this one listen listen you need to uh, uh, invite that special person to tune in. You know what I say? You you WhatsApp it, you Messenger it, you Periscope it, you you internet it, you telephone it, you knock it on the door and say, "Look, tune in against all odds. Show is on." I think Kelly Jackson, what have you got in store? Listen, I always say, ah. Uh, God has a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. And I know, listener, you are tuned in, you are thinking, Fikelepi, I don't know what my purpose is on earth. Fikelepi, I don't know if I even have a purpose on earth. But let me just assure you, when God chose that day for you to be born, before you were even born, he predestined you. He planned everything about your life. So everything about you, listener, is not ordinary. Oh my goodness. What I'm trying to say is that you are tuned in. You are an original. There is no other person who is like you right here in the world. You might have someone who looks like you, but guess what? They are not you. That's why your DNA is just different from the next person who's with you. Fikelep, you are talking deep here. Listen, I have my guest on the show tonight who is a miracle from God. I am telling you when I say uh, this young man is a miracle from God. I know you are dying to know what his name is, where he comes from. Oh my God. You know what, Bright? I would like you to introduce yourself to our listeners all over the world so they know who is right here next to me. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Bright and I live in Kingston upon Hull uh, in the UK. Uh, originally from Zimbabwe, and I'm 26 uh, years old. So you live in Kingston, Kingston upon time. We are talking up north here. Yep, yep, in the north of England. Wow, what what do you do? You know, you know, listeners. This young man is so modest. You know, uh, there is more to bright gents than just bright. So what do you do at the moment? Uh, at the moment, I uh, I run my own business. Um, I've got a company called Humberside Removers and Deliveries. So we do all sorts of deliveries, contract work for companies. Um, you know, we do domestic house removals, commercial house removals, office removals for, for, for businesses and private companies. And yeah, that's what I do full time at the moment, uh, as well as my ministry. Uh, having graduated from Howard University in 2011 uh, with a degree in sports and exercise science. Wow, wow. Listen, listener, we have an entrepreneur here. And uh, you, you were talking about ministry. Uh, t tell us more about your ministry before we hear about your journey. Yeah, uh, I, I honestly believe that um, my work is my ministry. My life is my ministry. 
and connecting what I do right now in my business. I believe that's a ministry. So providing jobs for the community, jobs for the young men who are jobless. And uh, that alone for me is a ministry. So my ministry is my work that I do, providing jobs and creating opportunity for opportunities for others is, yeah, that is my full-time ministry. Well, I love how you've put it. You know what, uh, um, Bride? Nowadays, uh, people think when you're talking about ministry, you're talking the pulpit, you're talking about preaching uh, uh, behind the pulpit. But you realize that providing jobs for, for the jobless, that alone is, is reviving somebody's life. Now, I want to know, how did a Humberside, Humberside removal, yep. how did this come about? Did you just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to start my own business? <laughs> what inspired you to do that? Um, Humberside removals was born uh, purely from the Holy Spirit. It was born of God. Uh, I started that in 2013, late 2013, around about October time is when I registered it uh with the hmrc but what really happened before that is uh, i was i found myself working in a care home and i was kind of lost at that time in terms of okay what what does god really want me to do what's my ministry what's my purpose in this world and you know just like most people do i thought okay the best way for me to earn more money is to do a master's but then little did i know that god had a bigger plan for me a bigger purpose so as much as i worked in a care home at that time i was always broke and I never really had enough money. So I remember really making a covenant with God at that time and saying, okay, God, here I am for you. What do you really want me to do? If you really just want me to do something, then show me a way. And I think at that time, the only thing that came to my mind was buying a van. Somehow I knew that if I had one, I would never be in this position of actually being broke and being lost and confused. So God made that happen. He provided the finances and I then registered Humberside Removers and, and Deliveries three years ago. And yeah, now it's taken off and you know everyone really is talking about it. Everyone knows about it and it's providing jobs for more than just three people. It's families that are changed and transformed. Wow, wow. So you have offices of your own now. You are, you've employed staff. You've got so many. I would imagine you've got quite a few removal uh, what do they call it lorries yeah. vans yeah yeah it's, it's amazing actually yeah yeah currently i work from home um as a preference um but yeah we do have two vans and we're planning to grow and so right now it's just a matter of seeing what what else we can do to expand and grow and structureize things um yeah as we're growing amazing amazing listen i i wanna uh go a little bit Further. Yep. So how did you come? You were talking about God because there's someone out there who's tuned in. Yeah. How did you come to know God? Um, it is a really long story. I think I'll just take a little snippet out of my testimony and say how I really got to know God. Uh, I'm trying to think whether to start from the very beginning or just the, um, the uh, bit that I got saved and born again. Do you let, let's talk about the bit that you got saved and yeah. born again. But uh, listener, I am going to uh, rewind or have a, a flashback in a minute after we take a break. Yeah. Um, I think actually, listener, you don't want to miss this one. So I think, should we take a break or should we talk about salvation before we take a break? You choose. Um... Let me get some water. Let's take a break. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. My guest definitely wants us to, to take a break. Listen, before we take a break, mm. I, I just want to uh, uh, remind you before the end of this interview, I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be giving you the details uh, if you want to get in touch with the Humberside removals. Yep. Um, if you need anything moved or if you, if you want to, if you are always moving things about, you know, there's some people who've got uh, businesses yep. and they want things delivered every day to Marks and Spencers or to to stores and things like that. Do you do that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, we do actually. We've done some deliveries for Marks and Spencers, some deliveries for Argos. Uh, so we have done some, you know, um, some really large deliveries for companies. So mm. and we do cover nationally. So we, we have picked up our clients from London, from Essex, bringing them up north from Scotland and bringing them down south. So we do provide a national coverage. 
when it comes to domestic or commercial moves. I love that. I love that. You know, now we're going to play one of your favorite songs and I'm not going to tell the listeners which one until after the break. Listener, don't touch that dime. You want to hear the testimony of this young man. I am telling you. Ambassade Removals and Deliveries is a removal based company in the UK in East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. We specialize in house removals, office removals, piano removals, short and long term storage facilities, men with van services, and contract deliveries. We serve both domestic and commercial customers. We provide a nationwide coverage to any part of the country, so it doesn't matter where you're moving to, we can get you there. Be sure we can be of service. Call us for free on 08 Quad 016 008 or on 074-110-38515. For more information, visit our website on www.humbersidedeliveries.co.uk. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. Humberside Removals and Deliveries, we can get you there. Fasten your seatbelts. You're listening to the Against All Odds radio show with award-winning author and motivational speaker Fikela B. Jackson here to inspire, empower, encourage, ignite your dreams and entertain. Keep it logged on Oasis Universal Radio. For more information, visit www.fikelabjackson.com. Surrounded 
such a great cloud of witnesses Hearts of the fathers Hearts of the children Turning, turning, turning
wow welcome back welcome back that was a very special song the reward by uh david hesler what does that song uh do to you because that was your chosen song T yeah. take us back in time yeah this song is uh I, I always say that i do have a song for every season uh for every moment and for every time that i'm actually going through uh it's quite significant for me because it just takes me back to uh to a point where you know, I was born again and I'm like, okay, the cross actually did make a way. So one of the things that it says was the cross has made a way uh, for us to enter into God's presence and see his face. So that's, you know, it's really, it's quite deep, you know, thinking about it that way. You know, Christ died for my sins and he's, he's paved the way for me through the cross. So whenever I look at the cross and what God did on the cross, what Jesus went through, it just reminds me that, okay, my sins are forgiven. Wow. You know, um, yeah. Yeah, I really have nothing to worry about. Christ really took everything. Oh and, my God. And, and he claims me uh, when he died on the cross. Wow, wow. So what you are looking at when you are thinking of the cross, you are thinking of that divine exchange. Yep. What kind of a man is this? Jesus. He actually took all your sins, all our sins, including you, listener. Yeah. Yeah. He exchanged it. Yep. You know, it's like you've got all this mess and the guy says, well, you give me that. I'll give you back your life. Yeah. He's like, how can you <laughs> take the mess? You know, yeah. Do you know it, it's, yeah. it's hard to figure out. Yeah. But for you, it's very deep. Now, I, I just can we talk about your salvation or do you, let, let's let's go back in time. Who is bright? L let's 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 go back in time. Who is bright? <laughs> Yeah, Bright. Bright was born in um, December '89, uh, and I grew up in a village in Kai, back home in Zimbabwe, and that's where I spent uh, the first ten years of my life. I lived with my grandmother and my grandfather, who were both farmers uh, at that time, and yeah, that's where I spent the first ten years, and we were farming and doing all sorts of things. And uh, yeah, my grandfather, my grandmother was a Christian, and my grandfather was uh, a witch doctor. Or if, uh, yeah, what they call him a language. Esangoma, Juju Man, or yeah. Fortune Teller. Yeah. They, yeah. they got different names to it. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he used to do all those things, you know, casting stones and, you know, spraying us with stuff. You know, he was, yeah, everything going on. I, you know, I witnessed it when I was young. Wow. Wow. So you, you grow up until you are 10 years. What happens when yeah. you are 10 years? So then my, my mom and dad moved us to the city. And when I was 12, uh, my dad took us, me and my sister, to a boarding school uh, in Solusi, back in the back uh, side of uh, Blawayo. So that's where I would spend uh, two years of my life in a, in a boarding school, Seventh-day Adventist boarding school. Uh, and we used to pray a lot. Uh, I remember, you know, we used to pray at least 12 times a day. Oh wow! <laughs> once, That's a lot of praying yeah, there. That's a it? lot of praying. Wow! Lot of praying, wow! Know, once before every subject and once before every meal. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I did get baptized there as well. Uh, it was a vegetarian school and no meat. Very strict environment. Uh, yeah, yeah, we used to joke about it really because we used to say it's, it felt like prison uh, where we were. <laughs> <laughs> So all that praying really, did it make any difference? Did you really believe or you just prayed because you were asked to pray? Were you just going through the emotions or did you believe when you prayed? Yeah, that's a funny thing actually. It's a really good question. No, actually, it never really did anything. Hmm. Uh, it was more like, okay, memorize the scriptures. What's yeah. your favorite verse? What's your favorite scripture? What's the longest scripture in the Bible? What's the shortest scripture in the Bible? And I think everyone's, I think, yeah, we used to joke and everyone's, your favorite scripture because you often get asked what's your favorite scripture in the Bible and you're supposed to say it and we'll say it's Jesus wept you know <laughs> <laughs> so okay yeah Jesus wept okay why did he weep so yeah it, it really didn't mean anything and it re really didn't do anything to me as it was just strict and very formal do, do you know why I, I repeated that bright is that mm. there, there's so many people in a minute we're gonna talk about salvation yeah. that have this belief that oh I grew up in a Christian home but that doesn't make them Christians uh, there's some people who say well I uh, we always read the Bible in my house or in my school like you you were praying and, and all that but then that doesn't make you a Christian 
Yeah, it's quite interesting yeah. actually. It's very mm. interesting. You you meet a lot of people. I'm sure you can even go to a club today and someone will say, "Yeah, I'm a Christian." Yeah. You know, being a Christian is is just something. You know, it's it's a term used loosely, so it's it's very. Yeah, it's quite it's quite funny in a way when you think about it. After you know uh, meeting Christ and you hear everyone saying I'm a Christian, you look. Are you really? Yeah, and you, yeah. You, you say like you're you really a Christian. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone is, but it's when you start to engage Jesus and really start asking deep questions, you realize yeah. that they say, you yeah. know what? Yeah. You're going too far. I'm a Christian, you know. Against all odds, show with Fikilafi Jackson on Oasis Universal Radio. 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 Radio, building lives, restoring hope, reaching the unreachable. You know, I love having God's power just circulating around me. I love having His Word penetrate me. Here to inspire, to empower, and to encourage. It's uplifting versus secular music that just might be tearing it down. Keep it locked, Keep it locked. with Fikilafi Jackson on Oasis Universal Radio. For more information, please visit our website www.aosuk. Ambassador Removals and Deliveries is a removal based company in the UK in East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. We specialize in house removals, office removals, piano removals, short and long term storage facilities, men with van services, and contract deliveries. We serve both domestic and commercial customers. We provide a nationwide coverage to any part of the country, so it doesn't matter where you move into, we can get you there. Be sure we can be of service. Call us for free on 08 quad 016 or on 074 110 For more information, visit our website on www.humbersidedeliveries.co.uk. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus. Humberside Removals and Deliveries, we can get you there. Welcome back, welcome back. Yay, listen, are you still here with me, your host, Fikela Fee Jackson? Guess what? I still have the young man, Bright, with me. Bright, you were just telling us about your journey. Now yep. you are in a, in a boarding school where you are just going through emotions. You, yep. There is a lot of prayer going on, but ain't nothing going in your spirit. No. You are all laughing about it and it's nothing really. Go, please go ahead and tell us your journey. Yeah, so that was the brief time that I spent at Solusi, uh, Adventist High. Um, just when I was about to enter my Form 3, uh, we came to the UK. At this time I was 14, so uh, my mum and dad brought us to the UK. They're already here, so we met them here. And that's when I continued secondary school uh, uh, at a school called Sydney Smith. Uh, so coming from Zimbabwe language was a big, big problem. It was a, it was a barrier for me and uh, understanding the other friends and kids in school was a challenge uh, but not only was that the only thing but also financially we're struggling at home uh, as a family so I would often take sweets and cans of coke and um, and crisps to school and chocolates just to sell and make some money and that's the first time really I started uh, really experiencing this spark of entrepreneurship that I had in me wow wow so how did you used to buy the cans of coke so you buy five of them or ten of them because i'm just trying to picture <laughs> this little boy who's one trying to integrate in a new school yep. where you are talking and and no one understands what, what are you on about mate yep. <laughs> well, what did you just say yep. and probably you didn't even understand them did you understand what they were on about yourself no actually no i thought they spoke fast they thought i spoke fast so it was uh, <laughs> yeah it was tough it was tough yeah uh, wow. communication was was terrible but I, re I really had to learn fast, uh, obviously, you know, I just really had to... You had to leg it, you yeah, had to just like I, I just get to grip, it. you know? Yeah, yeah, there was no wow. excuses, it was in the deep end, so yeah. I had to... Yeah. I had to make it happen. Wow, wow. And there yeah. you are selling cans, selling crisps and that. Yeah. So you, you would make profit and then you go and buy some more. Yeah. So yeah. did you have to end up having all these customers who were expecting that you would bring? Did you bring that <laughs> drink? Yeah, it was really good actually. I used to buy them from a market. So just outside my house where I grew up, there was a market every Thursday. So I'd, you know, buy them in bulk, you know, and as much as I could fit in my bag and take them to school and start selling them, <laughs> wow. you know, not as a way of making a business, but I didn't really see it as a business at that time. It was just a way of life. Yeah. You know, if you don't have any money and you're pushed to a corner, you just have to survive. So wow. that's what it was like for me. I, I never really took it serious or really saw, you know, how much impact it would have for me later on in life or, yeah, you had no definition. Then it was more like, okay, make some money so you can get on the bus and buy some lunch, you know. 
that's amazing so yes let continue with your journey so now <laughs> here you are you are you are trying to make yourself money and then what happened yeah so that, that went well uh by god's grace that went well so i finished my gcse's uh, and in 2006, uh, I found myself in college. So I was in white college. Uh, that's when I would say my life really began uh, when I was in college, uh, because that's when I started smoking weed. Yeah, that's when I really started drinking as well. And I met a whole new set of friends uh, when I was 16. That's where life really, really began for me. Oh my goodness. So you are 16, everything changes. You start smoking weed. Yeah. Not only do you start smoking weed, you start drinking. Yeah. So what are we talking about here? Laga? Are we talking spirits or what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, we're talking everything. You know? Everything. Yeah, fully fledged uh, confusion. Uh, lost. Uh, I would spend the next four years really of my life just in this dark world of, uh, yeah, just uh, shamelessness really in, in what I was doing. So, you know, smoking, drinking, clubbing, partying, just... Yeah, lost and confused in and out of relationships and just in utter chaos, if I can put it that way. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So in this uh, group of friends, yep. was there nobody saying, guys, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody was just drunk and just waiting for the next um, fix. Or, and how were you accessing this alcohol and, and, and the weed? How, how were you... The funny thing is, you know, once you're in this world, uh, you know, you surround yourself with friends and a group of people that actually enjoy and do things that you do. It seemed normal. This was a wow. way of life. Yeah, oh the only people goodness. that I knew are people that did what I did. So the only people that I hung out with are people that did, you know, exactly the same thing. So it seemed like, you know, a way of life and anyone else that wasn't doing that was against us. So, <laughs> wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. If anyone, so did your parents or somebody notice that so there was a change in your life? Yeah, yeah, parents, uh, my mum definitely noticed. Uh, I think my mum would never go to bed really until I came home. So for those years that I was going through that, my mum did notice and she never really said anything, but I'm pretty sure she was praying. She wouldn't go to bed. Every time I come home at about 2 a.m. in the morning, she would, she'd be awake and then she would just go to bed after that. So, and my dad did notice as well because, uh, yeah, our relationship really wasn't that good at that time. Uh, as you know, as I was doing all of this, uh, I can imagine if parents know they're not the happiest, but they're just praying that you really come out of it. So may I ask you, during this time when you were sober, I'm sure there were times when you were sober. During that moment, was there anything in you that was thinking, "Bride, what are you doing?" Or did he just feel like, "Oh well, you know, there we go again. When is the next, you know, alcohol or the the next, uh, you know?" Yeah, it's funny. I really have to bring it to the spiritual realm to, to kind of make sense of it. Because when the devil has you in this corner, really, he just buries you in it. You know, and you're just stuck and you just go and run in circles. So there was no sense at all. There was no way out. You know, I was in there and I was, I was in there for life, really. For it's me, like that was being it. in prison, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Wow. You're in wow. chains. You're in You're chains. In chains. Yeah. For four good years. Four years, yeah. I would spend also two years uh, at university. Um, yeah. So it was college and university of this whole uh, life I was living in. You know? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So what happened after four years? Yeah. So after four years, um, while I was in all this uh, that I was going through, I would often see Christians around, you know, and that's the great thing about being a Christian. You really have to keep on pressing on and being who you are because there's people watching you. So I would, I would notice one or two Christians. I'm like, okay, there is something different about this guy. You know, there is a peace that he has that I wish I had. So at the back of your mind, you do know that, okay, you know, there is a way, but you really don't have access to it. So that's why it's important for us to evangelize and minister and really share the gospel wow, with wow. people that you know that we see as lost even if it's just saying a single word or a single thing or mm, just mm. really it's like so, sowing a seed isn't yeah, it yeah you sow a seed wow uh, not just by saying things sometimes but just being yourself and really representing christ in your life you can sow so many seeds by doing things that way um yeah so what happened was um one of my friends got um admitted to a mental institution um during that time so I went over to see him and he's the first person really that when I sat down, 
He says to me, look, right, you need to give your life to Christ. You need to start serving God. You need to change the way you dress and stop swearing and change this and change that and really start to follow Christ. And I said, we didn't down. even talk about the language. So the language as well was, it wasn't not just the <laughs> drinking. So the language was different as well. Oh, yeah. Swearing was just like normal. It's, yes, daily oh, life. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Swearing is just, you know, you swear after every word. It's so cool. And it's, it's, it's the only thing that, you know, it's the only way you speak and the only way you understand each other is swearing. And never mind the way you speak is the music you're listening to as well. So that has a large influence on what you're watching on TV and. And your role models at that time, you know, it's it's, it's a different type well, of music. Oh as my well. goodness! Oh my so, goodness! Yeah, you have people that you look up to in the music world that actually speak the way you speak and do things the way you do. So that's also another dimension of how you actually get fed into this life as well. It's it's almost as if the whole system is designed. I was speaking to my son the other day, and he said to me, "Mummy, don't you see?" that even the music that us as young people yeah. is is designed it's it's almost designed for us to go that way Definitely. so you yourself have to find yourself as a man Let, please go ahead and continue yeah. so your friend is now in a in in a, a psychiatric uh, or an institute please yeah. go ahead yeah so he's there and you know i, I sit down with him uh, for, and he says give your life to christ yeah he says yeah. change your life you know you know change everything about you and just start serving god and i'm like okay you know what i think you've really gotten mad that's probably why you're in here and i go my way and uh two days later i got a phone call that he passed away um you know in smoke inhalation when he came home one night late uh yeah he just inhaled some smoke in the house and he passed away oh my goodness yeah that's when my life really changed. That's when actually, when I was working home that night, I remember just making a conscious decision saying, okay, God, I really need to, you know, surrender and give my life to you. Because if I don't do this now, I probably wouldn't get any other chance to actually give my life to you. So that's the first step that I did just to confess that as I was walking and say, okay, God, I'm ready. I think this is time. I think if I don't do this now, I won't get any other time to. Do you know what's amazing? Last night, uh, we were having dinner with uh, your pastor, oh, yeah. and he says he remembers, Pastor Philip, oh, yeah. he said he remembered you calling him, saying, Pastor, I need to talk to you, <laughs> like you've got to sort this thing out. So so what happened? Did you then see Pastor Philip straight away and say, look, this is it, I'm giving my life to Christ, or did you speak to God? Tell us what happened. Yeah, so what happened, there was his funeral, so my friend's funeral, so people gathered, and there was a pastor preaching uh, that day I remember clearly and he was preaching on the message on how life is borrowed so that's the message that he was preaching and after he finished the message he then said okay if there's any of you that want to give your life to Christ just raise your hand and I thought okay you know there weren't too many people in the room that raised their hands but I just raised my hand and I thought okay it's just a hand you know that's just so simple and that was it and after he prayed uh, and he, no one really laid hands on me he just prayed that simple prayer and when it finished, he said, okay, you can go and see Pastor Philip. He was just standing by the door. And I just thought, okay, let, let me just go chat to him. And that's when he actually introduced himself and said, okay, we'll meet on Sundays. Uh, I saw and saw such a place and how then, yeah, that's when I, I went there on the Sunday for the first time to, to go and see what happens. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is amazing. Congratulations. I know it sounds like so, so such a long time, but for us and for uh, on behalf of the listeners, yeah. because I know there's many mothers out there who are tuned in right now. You are tuned in and your son or your daughter is strong out on drugs. There is hope. There is hope. Don't give up hope. Yeah. When you used to come home and you find your mom awake, did that do anything to you? That mom has been waiting, it's 2 a.m., she can't <laughs> sleep because I'm out there. Did that not make you convict you or something? No, if, if anything, you're thinking it's annoying. What are you doing up late, mom? You know, uh, you, you, you know I wouldn't speak to you. It's like, time. mommy, get her life. What <laughs> yeah. time? So, oh, you my know, goodness. the moment I get oh to bed, I'll hear climbing up the stairs, going to bed. But yeah, you're thinking to yourself, you, you know, you won't even talk to her because if you do, she'll realize that your eyes are red and you've been smoking so or you're smelling of alcohol. And she'd ask you what you've been doing. So you don't want any of that. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so oh, my say. goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so now you have one friend that's passed away. Yeah. But now you've given your heart to Christ. Yeah. So what happens? So, yeah, my life really started uh, taking shape from there. Uh, my other friends continued doing what they were doing. 
and my did life. they not say what where are you come let's let's do it what what's happened now yeah you know yeah, yeah they, they, they they did they did they continued to and the funny thing is i knew they wouldn't understand what i was going through and i would often say to them uh i'll, I'll be back in five years <laughs> That's one thing I to say to them. i'll be back in five years just give me five years i'll be back in five years and that was 2009 uh 10 11 12 13. yeah i think by 2014 i'd gone beyond coming back anyway and they just left me alone but yeah what happened at that point was i started having dreams um you know visions uh and all these snakes and all these weird dreams that started coming back and that's when i really i wasn't sure what was going on but there was a fight in the spiritual realm wow uh, now that's when i really things started getting really serious i started to realize okay what's really going on I, re I never really had a problem with dreams and you know being torn apart by the dark world and the light world in in my dreams but things started happening because the dark world were realizing that look we've lost him yeah. he's he's actually not coming back yeah we've got to fight here yeah. oh my god so in your dreams what are you fighting brian oh uh, you really i think i remember vividly at one point i could really see the devil and, and and jesus really pulling my hands from one side and the other pulling my hand on the other so you're fighting spirits you know you're fighting uh, I was fighting bulls, you know, I would have a bull chase me all night long, you know, and I'd be running away, climbing trees and trying to really avoid it. Uh, and I'll be fighting and I'll be running, jumping snakes in my sleep as they cross my path. So, yeah, you're just fighting things that you have no idea what they are. But, yeah, it plants a lot of fear in you and you're just like, OK. So as a result, you're sort of like uh, you're caged in, you know, you're like... Uh, yeah, a donkey that's tied on a tree. It yeah. can only eat so far. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you can, can't go. Yeah, that you can't far. go that far. You can only oh eat goodness. as long as the string lets you go. So, oh my God, that was the whole purpose of the enemy doing that, and he knew that it's through the dreams that God was to speak to me in the future, and so he was really attacking that. You know, wow! Me. But you had to break free of all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me a while to realize that. Okay, now I have to share what I'm going through with my spiritual pastors and you know people that I can actually pray for me. Because when that's sudden, when it's something new like that, you don't know, so you you're afraid, you're keeping it to yourself. But that's what the enemy really wants you to do is to keep those troubles to yourself at times. And we have to realize that it's important we share and get prayed for uh, as Christians. Because when you keep that to yourself, it's got you on a hook. But the moment I let go and I told one or two. Uh, leaders, uh, it was easy, you know, it was easy. I started getting scriptures uh, on how to pray and just really uh, stepping on it. And yeah, wow. I broke free from Wow. That. And we shared the scripture earlier. Uh, can you share the listeners the scripture that we spoke about? Yeah. God has given you power to trample over. Yeah. Yeah, it's when it's when uh, Jesus speaks to his disciples when he's setting them off and he says, I've given you power to trample upon the snakes and the scorpions and yes, the enemy yes. has no power over you. Yeah, that's a really powerful scripture. It I think is. it's in Luke, it is. Is it Luke 10, 19. Yes, it's Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that, wow. that's the scripture that I, I really had to meditate on and just walk around and pray and just stop my feet and say, you know, the Lord has given me power to trample upon you. Wow. And yeah, wow. as time went on, the you know the snakes started getting smaller. Some of them would start dying in my dreams, and some of them would you know as as I see them, I'd speak in tongues, and they would just you know just shrivel up and vanish. Wow, wow, wow! And here we go, listener. You're still with me here, your host, Fikelepi Jackson. You know, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued uh, with this great young man. You know. Um, we can't uh, uh, finish this uh, interview without really defining what salvation was because earlier we touched on salvation is that you you don't get saved by because you grew up in a Christian home or because you read the scripture. So when we rewind a little bit in the in this in the boarding school, you were reading, you were praying, but nothing was happening in your spirit, man. But when you then gave your heart to Christ. Yeah. You know, just, just, that's true salvation. Yeah. You, did you confess Christ? Yeah. Just, just right. help somebody out there. Yeah. What, what, what happened when you gave your life to Christ? Yeah, it's, it's confessing. It's giving up everything. You know, it's, it's not by, um, by force, you know, and it's true salvation is not really by force. It's a choice. That's so, right. You know, that's right. We, we come to a point, you have to come to a point where you say, okay, I give up everything. I've tried everything. And Jesus have your way. So it's that moment of surrender where you you're powerless, you know. But as long as you know you're proud and you're saying, okay, I know Jesus, you know, I know Jesus. It's not really about you know uh, uh, saying what you think, you know. But you know, 
true salvation is a conviction within your heart. That's right. That's you know, right. Where, where, where yeah. God dwells yeah. in you and it changes everything. And you will know it when you reach that point. Yes, you will. <laughs> you, you will. will. And no one really has to. Did, did you, I, I love the fact that when when you then started having this spiritual battle, yeah. you, you realized that, look, I can't do this alone. Yeah. You went back to your spiritual uh, mentors and yeah. pastors to say, look, you've got to pray for me here yeah. and pray with me. Yeah. But you didn't just do that even alone. You began to take the word of God for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that because that so many people, I, I, I think they don't realize how powerful the word of God is. You know, that yeah. when we speak the word of God in our life, yeah. something changes. So you began to declare that scripture over your life. It's true. It's, it's funny, really, because it makes you realize how, excuse me, how, um, yeah, the gospel is free. You know, you know, salvation is free. You know, God, you know, everything is done on the cross. Everything was done. He died for our, for our sins on the cross. And yeah, and it's when you confess. So you realize that, okay, I can actually do this. It's one thing that my pastor told me. It's just to say, okay, I'm going to give you these scriptures. Go and pray. Go and meditate on them. You know, write them on the wall and put them there and just, you know, meditate and pray over them. And it's like, okay, you know, I, I really have to, I wasn't comfortable doing it myself. You know, I had this idea that, okay, I'll get the pastors to constantly pray over me for for 10 years or donkey's years, whoever knows how long. But that was very, very, I really appreciate that looking back and I say, okay, you know, I really had to do this myself as well, just to understand that, okay, as I'm growing, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll have to do this myself. So I had to, and it, it's really, it's a great way of, of, of learning that, okay, salvation is for free. Wow. Wow. You know, sitting here, listener, this young man could have become just one of the statistics. It could have been you in that psychiatric hospital, yeah. you know, but you didn't just lose one friend. Don't go away, listener, because we're going to take a break. And when we come back, you need to tell me how your other friend died yep. and uh, uh, then how we then continue to end up being Humberside Removals. Yep. Don't touch that dial. Humberside Removals and Deliveries is a removals based company in the UK, in East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. We specialize in house removals, office removals, piano removals, short and long term storage facilities, men with van services, and contract deliveries. We serve both domestic and commercial customers. We provide a nationwide coverage to any part of the country, so it doesn't matter where you move into, we can get you there. Be sure we can be of service. Call us for free on 08 Quad 016 or on 074 110 For more information, visit our website on www.humbersidedeliveries.co.uk. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus. Humberside Removals and Deliveries, we can get you there. Against All Odds Show with Thick Leffy Jackson on Oasis Universal Radio. 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 Building lives, restoring hope, reaching the unreachable. You know, I love having God's power just circulating around me. I love having His Word penetrate me. Here to inspire, to empower, and to encourage. It's uplifting versus secular music that just might be tearing it down. Keep it locked, Keep it locked. with Thick Leffy Jackson on Oasis Universal Radio. For more information, please visit our website, www.aosuk. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears have come. I'm no longer.
Wow, that was a powerful, powerful song. We are no longer slaves. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, listener. Oh, my God. This is very powerful. Amen. So, we've lost one friend. Yeah. We're back on. Let's continue with the journey. Over to you, yep. uh, Bright. Uh, so, yeah. So, I finished uni in 2011. And I find myself uh, working uh, in a care home. And then this is where I started really to question God. I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? What is the purpose of my life? What have you called me to do? And yeah, as I'm planning and strategizing on how I can make more money and, you know, I'm back at this point where I'm like, okay, perhaps if I do a master's, uh, you know, I can earn more money and be in a greater position to, uh, yeah, to just have enough for me to buy a house and buy a car. And uh, as I was applying for this master's, God intervenes. And the day before my, my parents come and pick me up to go for an interview for, for the master's, God says, okay, no, you're not going. Uh, that's not the route that I have for you. I want you to start a business and you're staying in hall uh, against uh, everything that everyone ever said about, about how at that point oh, oh, oh. God says stay. Oh uh, my goodness. Yeah, so you know, I, I tell my mom, I'm like, okay, mom, uh, God says I'm going to stay and I'm really I'm going to start a business. And I'm not going anywhere with you. I've had enough of the education and I've just had enough. It's my time now to do what, what's in my heart. And so, yeah, as tough as it was, we, we tell my dad and we have back and forth uh, debates about, okay, should I, should I not? But in the end, uh, he's convinced that, okay, it's, uh, it's okay for me to stay. Yeah, so I registered my first business, uh, which was a fitness and well-being business. Uh, having done sports and exercise science was the easiest thing to go for at that time, but it wasn't what God had in mind. So a year later, I would then dissolve that and start to register homicide removers and deliveries. And yeah, that's how it's grown and I ended up being the person that I am now. Just wow. really just changing lives and employing people and uh, yeah, growing from strength to strength in my knowledge of running and starting a business and employing people. And yeah, just two months ago, uh, as that was at uh, Amy's graduation, I, um, yeah, I see one of my friends. Oh, congratulations to Amy, by the way. I know she's tuned in. Yep. Wow, congratulations to you. Wow. She, what did she graduate in again? Uh, she graduated in economics um, and she got a master's as well. Uh, awesome, she was at the awesome. Of do you yeah. know, I might, I might try and get her to be, uh, just to say, to greet our listeners. Do you think she would say yes? Yeah, I think, I think, think she's she really say shy, yes? but I think she would say she yes. She'll say yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. we'll we go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listener, you, we might treat you to Amy. She is gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful inside out. Anyway, let's not digress. So, yeah. this is very crucial. Yeah. So, continue, please. Yeah, so I meet my friend Wallace. He's spent the last six years in jail. Bear in mind, this is a friend that I've, I've grown up with and, you know, we've gone. During those four years yeah. of uh, weed and drinking, yeah, drinking. He, he was part of it. He was very so much Did he go yeah. to, to prison as a result of all the operations that you were doing? Yeah, definitely. Some of the things were things that we're doing at that time, you know, robbing people and, you know, uh, you know, just vandali vandalizing things and yeah, mainly robbing because that's what he was quite Because good at. you needed the money yeah, to buy the, money. The, 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 the weed and yeah. to, oh my goodness. Yeah, so we'd, we'd find victims and, you know, get money off them. That's a nice way of putting it, by the way. But yeah, so. But he, you were not being nice to these victims. No, were no, you? no. In most cases, we'd carry, you know, hammers as, as a, a way of, um, you know, defending ourselves so we're ready for anything really and I think we had enough friends in jail at that time so we knew that if we got arrested we had uh, enough protection inside. Do, do you know there is someone <laughs> who's tuned in you know can you hear this listener this is what is happening in our world these young men they know that even in prison their friends are already there yep. if they got arrested and go in prison that's okay anyway but they will continue the dealings in there yeah. the deals will still continue in prison absolutely selling the weed buying the weed and god knows what else exactly yeah and some oh people will tell you goodness. that you know there's more money to be made in prison than outside it's the message that and it probably happens and it's, it's probably what really happens you know some people make more money in there so going in there is more of a it's benefit. actually more yeah. of a benefit than, than, than a loss so oh my god yeah. oh my god but i thank god that messi said no so your yeah. friend is in prison for six years and yep. then he comes out yeah he comes out he's not the same guy that i used to know so he's on medication and all sorts of things 
So he comes out, I see him briefly, I take a few pictures with him, you know, and yeah, that's the last time I would see him, and I think that would be the last picture that's taken of him, as uh, three days later, I, I saw him on the newspaper that he's gone missing, and the following week, uh, then, uh, saw it on the paper again that he's, he's been found uh, in a trench somewhere, and he's, he's, he's no more. So that was, that was well. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My heart goes for the family. My condolences and my condolences to yourself because this happened not so long ago. No, no, it's recent. Yeah, it's just recent. It's not long ago. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And what did that do to your spirit, man? Bro? Yeah, it, you know, I remember my mom calling me actually just to check if I was okay to start with, uh, but also just to say, okay, thank God you've seen where God has pulled you from and you've seen where your friends have been and God has set you apart. So just continue praying and be thankful. So, you know, at, at this point I understood already, you know, what God had done for me. And yeah, it, it kind of just challenged me and just made me realize that there is no life really in the past. Yeah. Right, you know, I feel very strongly in my spirit that there is a young man and a young girl who's tuned in out there, wherever they are in the world, mm. and they are lost in drugs, and they are in gangs, they are robbing people, they are probably just in that place that you described earlier, yeah. that is like the devil puts you in a corner. What would you say to them? I would say, look, just, it is, uh, I have no doubt that, you know, deep within your heart, you do know that there is a God and that you do know that Jesus exists and you do know that there is a peace somewhere to be found. So just keep seeking that. Just keep, just keep saying that little, that little prayer within yourself. And, you know, eventually, you know, God is, is God is coming, you know, you know, the Holy Spirit is making a way for you. You know, there is a hope for you. I would definitely, definitely say that there is a hope for you. Just keep your heart open. Yes, it may take time for you to get out of there, but you know, I have no, no doubt. If I can get out, sure enough, you can. So just keep planting yourself around Christians and look for a way, and you, you will find it. You will find there is a hope, and you're not lost forever. Wow, wow, listener, you heard that. Uh, there is hope in your future. Yeah. No matter how bad the situation yeah. is, yeah. if bright against all odds, he's still standing. Surely you too can stand. Come out Absolutely. of the situation. You know, listener, I promise you that I might treat you to this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Amy. Um, Amy? Would you introduce yourself to our listeners all over the world? Just tell us what you do. We hear you just recently graduated. Please greet our listeners. Hello, everybody. So my name's Amy, um, and I've recently moved to London. Um, I did an undergrad in Hull, so politics and international relations. And I thought I'll go again and do a master's in economics. So um yeah that was my education and now i'm working um in the finance department of a law firm currently awesome awesome but you have big dreams so we will pack yours for now <laughs> because at a different time you will come back and tell us more and we are so excited here at against all odds we great things lie ahead how do you feel when you hear a testimony of this great 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 young man who is very important in your life? What 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 do, what can you say about Brian? <laughs> I mean, I'm always amazed. Like his testimony to me can never get old. Like I'm always encouraged because I'm always wowed by what just what God has done. Because like you said, you see so many people today, and not not many of them get out alive, or there isn't a happy ending. So yeah, I'm just encouraged. You heard that, Bright? Yeah. It's not everyone who has a happy ending. Yeah. Uh, but we, we're not just saying that. You are the one who've just actually shared with yeah. us the two young men who's become part of the statistics. Yeah. But thank goodness yeah. you are out. And today Amen. you are a CEO, a founder of yeah. a company that's thriving, yeah. that's doing very well. You are an employer now. Yeah. You, you are employing people. And you are about to do bigger, greater things. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you know what I ask from you, Bright, mm -hmm. is that we will be following here at Oasis Universal Radio. We will be following your progress. Please keep us informed on Absolutely. what you are doing. Absolutely. Uh, but right now, yeah. we're just thanking God for your life. I, I, I just want to know 
if you have that last word for that listener who's losing hope i don't know amy what would you say to a listener who's as young as you guys are who doesn't feel that there is hope in their future shall i go to you first yeah we can start with me i guess it, it just the simple words i can say is there's always hope like there's no you can't go so far yeah there's nowhere too far to go where the love of God can't find you and yeah he pursues you and yeah he's yeah this is this is destined as well just for you to be listening to us and yeah. just be reminded that there is hope and there's a great future ahead for you yeah. so yeah awesome yeah. awesome awesome yeah. right any last words yeah i think i'm quite you know inspired by what she says when she says the fact that you're listening to this you know there is hope for you i think the fact that you've made it this far and this far into the interview i think there is definitely hope for you so you can do so many things you can either get in touch uh with the host uh Figuera p jackson or you can either find me on facebook uh you can find me either on uh, on, on on linkedin or anywhere online really if you google me you can find me so you can check and see okay what can you do can we pray for you uh, can we share any words with you so you know there is a hope for you the fact that you've gone this far and god is definitely looking up to you wow wow listen believe me when i always say you've not tuned in by accident Amen. uh god must have known you're gonna tune in a uh, bright there's someone wondering you know how what's your website how can they reach uh in terms of business and uh, please give us all your uh contact details so we have yeah, uh, Humberside Removals uh, is everywhere online, so just uh, check it out on Google, Humberside Removals. So the website is humbersidedeliveries.co.uk. Uh, uh, you can find it also on Facebook, on Google+, Plus, or on Twitter, uh, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. So just, yeah, you can search for that or search for my name. Uh, you can find me or my mobile number is 74 3815 awesome listener you had it you know what from here uh from us here at, at the against all odds show and on behalf of oasis universal radio i want to thank you for being brave for telling your story we are yet to see great things Amen. and uh, i i know do you know what happened to the rest of your friends uh one of them uh got deported uh back to ghana after spending some time in prison as well uh, yeah, so those were the four close friends I had. Oh that my time, god! Uh, so they were amongst all of them. There were no uh, uh, ending that's ended good. Not quite. Except yeah. yourself. Yeah. So, listener, you join me when I say this young man is a miracle from God. Uh, from the Against All Odds team, we are saying goodbye for now. You know what? We'll be back with yet another inspiration inspiring program remember we are here to inspire you to ignite your dreams we are here to encourage you we are here to say you too against all odds you can stand you know what we're gonna end with this song i am free i'm no longer a slave yeah. I'm, a that, what, what, I'm a child of god that song i'm not a slave anymore please yeah. tell us more what what were you said yeah. you've got songs for each season so what season were you in when you were playing this song yeah this is a season of victory you know to say i'm no longer a slave i know i'm set free i'm a child of god you know um yeah i'm set free i think when you realize that you are a child of god Come on, you're no longer a slave to anything, to fear, especially to do things, to wow. venture into new things. Wow. Yeah, wow. To, yeah, to new challenges. So you're set free, go for it. You know? Wow. Oh my God. You know what? I don't want to let them go, but I have to let them go. Listener, don't go away. Remember here at Oasis, we're a station that does not sleep. It's coming straight after me. I think I believe that we're going all the way to Zimbabwe. We have John and Yoni who's coming to rock your world. And by the way, we have Songi all the way in the US, one on one with Songi. So don't go away. We also have Miss. K. I will have Miss K today all the way from the US. Remember, she's our youngest uh, um, um, 
a cont regular contributor, shall I call her? She's only 16 years old, but this child will teach you some things that you have not known. You know, she talks about anything. The other week she was talking about power, who we are in Christ. She is 16, but she was telling us that we have royal blood in us. We are royalty. We are a royal people, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. And she was saying in us, we have power. So I can't wait to hear what Miss K have for us. From me, uh, for now, I'm saying goodbye. Wherever you are in the world, don't touch when that dime. Thank you.